I think, I think the Noble Lord is not, not moving his amendment. Thank you very much. Not moved. Amendment 32. Still in Clause 1, Amendment 34, Lord Moylan. Um, my Lords, I, I, I struggle on uh, uh, looking for um, the, the prospect of meaningful change. In this case, unlike the previous groups, in one I was seeking to amend a, an existing statute, uh, in the last one I was merely uh, seeking to amend the wording of the current bill. In, in this case, I'm motivated by a sense of lacuna on reading the bill, particularly when we were at second reading, and I did make mention of this at the time, because, my lords, it's a well-known fact that what makes the, month, the world go round is money. Uh, money is a very sensitive subject when it comes to universities. It didn't used to be. It used to be the case that anyone in a university who mentioned anything as vulgar as money would, wouldn't be invited back to high table. But now money is a very important consideration. And the bill, of course, is not silent on money. The bill does have a section on overseas funding. It is not to that section that I'm turning my attention. It is the lacuna I refer to, is that it appears to say nothing whatsoever about funding coming from domestic sources. And I thought that as a, probe, as a series of probing amendments, I would put forward the current, uh, the, the amendments in this group, that is, if you wish me to refer to them, 34, 45 and 46, to try and box the compass, so to speak, of the different sources of money and how they can be used to inhibit free speech. So amendment number 34 discusses grants made by universities to academics working for them or within their ambit. Amendment 45 refers to grants, so to speak, made downwards by UK uh, research and innovation. And Amendment 46 relates to donations that are made to universities. And all of these, of course, could be used in a manner which is intended to influence, to limit, to shape um, freedom of expression within a university. Now, sometimes, my lords, we actually welcome that. I, I notice that um, it is a, a normal condition of cancer research charities that recipients do not have anything to do with tobacco companies. Uh, that is, uh, of, uh, many noble lords would welcome that. They would say that is a good interference with freedom of speech and freedom of action attached to a flow of money as a condition. But, of course, once one grants that, one ends up knowing, asking where to draw the line. And so these amendments are intended to test the role of money in doing this. It has been suggested that the one relation, Amendment 45, could trip over the Haldane principle, uh, which is a principle dating from... Um, a hundred years ago nearly, but still very entrenched, very properly entrenched um, in, um, in our uh, constitutional process, that decisions on grants for research purposes should not be made by ministers and that they must be made independently. Um, and therefore, to legislate on the matter at all is to offend the Haldane principle. But it isn't, of course, because there is nothing in my amendment which gives ministers any power at all. There is nothing in my amendment which relates to ministers. It is rather that we as Parliament would be creating conditions which we already do for the operation and the manner of operation of UK research and um, innovation. So I don't believe that the amendment uh, 45 conflicts with the Haldane principle at all. I'd very much like to hear my noble friend respond. I shan't go further into detail. I, I now wish to move on, if I may, briefly to Amendment 53. Reference was made earlier to an unlikely alliance between uh, the noble Baroness uh, Lady Bennett of Manor Castle and the noble Baroness Lady Fox of Buckley. And, and I find myself here in an unlikely alliance, perhaps, with the noble Lord, Lord Sicker, for whom I have a very high regard especially when it comes to do with anything concerning money, and indeed with universities, given his long academic career as a professor of accountancy. Um, I resiled 
from boxing the compass totally. I thought what this really needs is a further amendment that deals with the relations between corporate corporations, businesses, and universities. And I simply thought to myself, if I try and draft that with all the various exemptions that may be necessary, I will fall over and make a fool of myself. And hence it is that I actually really rather welcome the amendment from the noble Lord, Lord Sicker, as opening up, at least on a probing basis, the fourth side of the compass, so to speak. So we have donations, we have corporate relations, we have grants going downwards within universities, from the university body to its own, and we have grants coming down from higher above, from research councils and UK uh, RI coming down towards the universities. It's intended to cover all flows that might probably unsuccessfully, maybe there are some that escape, but it is at least a chance to hear from my noble friend what the role of money is this, and are we going to blink, are we just going to ignore this huge, this absolutely huge means of influencing a, a free speech and an expression of opinion? My lords are 